بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا پریویس کلاس وی ہیڈ ڈسکسٹ دا کمپیوٹر نیٹ ورکس دا پروٹوکولز اینڈ دا پورٹ نمبرز دا ٹی سی پی آئی پی ہیڈر فارمیٹ دا یو ڈی پی ہیڈر فارمیٹ the remote login and so forth. In today's lecture, uh, uh, we are discussing the addressing. So there are the four major types of the addressing. Uh, the specific addressing, the port addressing, the Uh, logical addressing and the physical addressing. So first of all, uh, before going to the address mechanisms, uh, let us see Uh, and discuss which type of the port addressings are available at which layers of the OSI reference models. So according to uh, this chart, what you can see over here, uh, the specific addresses belongs to the application layer the port addresses belongs to the transport layer <coughs> the logical addresses uh, belongs to the network layer and the physical addresses belong to the data link layer and the physical layer so keeping uh, this uh, in mind Uh, we can uh, go further and proceed. So let's have, uh, I will not uh, go in detail in the physical addressing and the other type of the addressing, but I will go in detail in the uh, network uh, addressings, clear? Uh, but anyhow, if we uh, look at the uh, physical uh, addressing, So this is the uh, network interface card address or the LAN card address that is always available, even with your cell phones also, and even with your computer LAN cards also. So if uh, we look at, it is a six octet, that is 48 bytes physical address. So if you look over here, So it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so this is the uh, six uh, byte are the six octets written in the hexadecimal form or the hexadecimal notation. That is zero up to nine and A up to F. Uh, means are zero up to F. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and similarly uh, up to F, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. So this is a combination. So uh, this is called, uh, the, the it is, uh, has two main parts, the left three uh, octets and uh, the right three octets. So the left uh, three octets are the company dependent and these are the companies unique. That is the manufacturers are the vendors of the 
uh, hardware uh, who is making these LAN cards, it belongs to them. And this right hand side is the device unique. For example, if uh, an Intel company has made two LAN cards, so this uh, part of these three octets will be similar for the uh, Intel company, but these three parts uh, will change for both the devices. So if an IBM has made two uh, devices, so this part for both the devices will be same, but this part will be changed for both the devices. So it is a device unique and it is a, a company's unique, whatever I said, it is available over here. So you can find uh, in the slides over here. So I think there is no need to uh, discuss our argo. So whenever uh, a switch is receiving a data packet related to a computer, so the switch stores the MAC address information with it. So as we have already studied that the switch is uh, uh, a broadcast available on the broadcast domain. So whenever it will receive the data, it will throw on all the slots or the ports. Uh, and all the devices connected to the switch will receive that information or data. But as I told, I think beforehand also uh, that if we are using the Cisco manageable switches, uh, the ZTE or the Huawei uh, manageable, uh, manageable switches, then this uh, discussion uh, is a bit changed and we will discuss it again uh, later on that how uh, they are dealing with it. Because uh, whenever those devices are keeping it, they throw the data belonging to the physical uh, uh, switch or the physical um, uh, LAN card, uh, keeping the information, both the IP addresses and the uh, physical addresses in the uh, MAC address table. So inshallah, we will discuss this uh, in detail in the next coming lectures. But anyhow, you keep this in mind that the switch determines the path uh, to a device based on uh, the physical address or the LAN card address. So whenever uh, our different computers are connected to uh, one another, so these devices are able to communicate with each other uh, uh, at the data link layer or at the physical layer using the LAN card. The next is the logical addressing or the IP addressing. So the logical addresses are necessary for the universal communication. So a universal addressing system is needed in which each host can be identified. Uh, the IP addresses are assigned only by the IANA and net internet assigned numbers authority. Although if a network is not connected to the internet, that network can determine its own numbering. For example, if a computer is connected to the internet, so it will follow the IANA rules and the regulations that they have defined for the public IP addressing and the private IP addressing that we will discuss in the second phase of the lecture. Uh, but <clears throat> if uh, 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 but if a computer is not connected to the internet, so uh, a user can assign its own uh, IP addresses. And these IP addresses may be either the public or the private. But if he gives a public address, uh, 
without the consent of the ayana then that public address will not work uh, and because it uh, may, uh, it is not uh, activated on the internet so uh, with the internet it will make a problem or it will give a conflict but as far as the private ip addresses are there no uh, these are working well in a local area network <clears throat> but the public network is not accepting it so this uh, we will discuss again uh, later on when we will uh, have a discussion on the uh, proxy servers are the public server are the public uh, slots are host are the ports of the router uh if we uh, look at the versions of the ip addressing so there are two uh, versions of the ip addressing those are usable throughout the world uh, one is the ip version 4 uh, uh which contains uh, the four octets means 32 bits and the other one is uh, the 128 uh bit address that is the ip version 6 so which contains the 16 octets are this address that you see over here it belongs to ip version 6 so as compared to the ip version 4 you can assign more addresses in the ip version 6 and frankly speaking what the survey is of the today's market so there is no public ip available in the ip version 4 all the public ip addresses are finished but there are different techniques through which uh, we uh, increase the usability or the reusability of the ip version 4 uh the reason for the ip version 4 is that maximum or most of the market is uh, occupying uh this ip and it is not easy uh task to convert the ip version 4 directly to ip version 6 Uh, because of the technical uh, issues uh, of course the technical issues are there but also uh, because of the hardware support because most of the new devices the computers the hardware and the software that comes to the market are supporting the ip version 6 including the ip version 4 but uh, the older versions the older routers the old uh, switches are the old pcs uh, do not support the ip version 6 so again let me say that it will take a time to uh, have uh the implementation of the ip version 6 but there are some of the company uh, countries uh, which are using the ip version 6 at the moment also and uh, they have been completely switched to the ip version 6 uh, for example japan uh, korea uh, sweden norway denmark the scandinavian countries canada uh, france germany they are switched to uh, the ip version 6 but uh, 
uh, uh, United States even, it has not been fully switched to the IP version uh, 6. Uh, still, it is using the IP version 4 as well as the IP version 6. And uh, not only the United States, but there are the rest of the countries all over the world. They are using IP version 4. So again, there is a conflict of the, uh, that how IP version 6 can communicate with IP version 4. So this is possible through tunneling. So a tunneling techniques uh, are used in which the as a, uh, a network that is deployed in IP version 4 and a network that is deployed in IP version 6. So the tunneling techniques are used in, uh, in which they are able to communicate with one another. So this tunneling is resolving the IP uh, version 4 to IP version 4 uh, connectivity issues. Uh, if we look at the IP version 6, so it fulfills the entire demands of the current day's market. But unfortunately, as I said, that it is not fully deployed and we are uh, using different techniques uh, uh, to, uh, to let the IP version 4 in use. But if we look at the IP version 6, uh, it has the enough IPs and not possible to be finished or ended in the near future. Uh, in 2004, Simon uh, Ger Frankel wrote a note that there will exist roughly 5,000 addresses for every square micrometer of the Earth's surface. That is, if we assign 5,000 IP addresses per micrometer on the Earth, uh, one micrometer is uh, uh, 10th leg of a meter. So if we have uh, assigned the IP addresses even to each part of a, a particle of a cent even, uh, which is not required anyhow, but we can assign. So that's why uh, the IP version 6 uh, has a bright future and it is the future uh, IP that that's why some of the uh, literature is uh, uh, terming it as IP next gen IP next generation so if you look over here IPNG IP next generation N stands for next and G stands for generation uh, because uh, it fulfills all the requirements of the future. Uh, that, so that's why uh, uh, if we uh, have the uh, computer devices, the mobile devices, they are providing a support both for the IPv4 and IPv6. So if you have the IPv6 network, you can uh, connect your devices to the IPv6 network. And if you have the IPv4 network, you can connect the devices to the IPv4 network. Okay. Uh, there is one other term that is also common uh, with this, that is the static and dynamic IP addressing. It is uh, a very good and very interesting topic because uh, if uh, we have to create a network as we created in our uh, lab classes, we assign normally the static IP addressing. 
So what is a static IP address in which we assign uh, the IP addresses individually one by one to each and every devices those are connecting to the network. For example, if we have five, six, seven, eight, 10, 15, uh, not necessary as much. Clear? So these devices can be connected to the network, but we will assign the IP addresses manually. Uh, if you have 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 computers, to all these computers, you will assign the IP addressing uh, manually. The other technique is the dynamic IP addressing in which you do not need to assign the IP addressing to each and every individual computer. But when a device is connected to the network, the IP address is automatically assigned to that device. Uh, so uh, if we look at the current network situation and scenario, it becomes easy to assign the IP addresses dynamically. Uh, for example, if you connect your mobile phone to the internet, uh, to the Wi-Fi, or uh, to the 3G or 4G, so your device is assigned the IP address, but you do not assign it. You just connect to a 3G network or a 4G network or uh, the Wi-Fi available at your home or the Wi-Fi available at your university and whenever it is connected it automatically gets the IP addressing. So frankly speaking at Ibasin University uh, whenever you are connecting to the network so your device is receiving the dynamic IP address that is it receives the IP address automatically and you do not need it. Uh, it has an advantage uh, that if uh, uh, the system dynamically assign instead of the manual IP addressing, so there will be no IP conflict. For example, 10 computers are connected and 11 computers come and wish to connect. So the system will assign the IP address automatically uh, that is available with it. But with the static IP address, you have to keep it that with a, a regard uh, that which of the IP addresses have been assigned to the systems and which are still available. And sometimes if by a mistake, a network administrator or a user assign uh, the static IP address manually, so there will be uh, a network conflict may occur in that situation. IP conflict may occur in that situation, in which there are some of the situation that maybe the two devices which are using the same IP address will start uh, uh, will malfunctioning. Uh, uh, they will not be able to use the network or the internet. And sometime due to this IP conflict, the entire network goes down. So that's why uh, uh, the best practice in the production environment is to uh, assign the IP addresses dynamically. But for a better control over the devices, uh, uh, the static IP addressing is recommended uh, because you have a good control and you know which of the IP address is assigned to which of the user uh, 
and you restrict a user from changing the IP addresses. So which of the portals or the website a man is using, you can uh, uh, keep an eagle eye upon that, that uh, which of the user is doing which type of the processes or which type of uh, the operations. So looking to the IP version four, which is using the four octets. One octet contains eight bytes. So the length of the IP version four IP address is 32 bits. So out of this 32 bits, we divide it into two parts. One is called the network part and the other one is called the host part. Our, the network part is called the net ID and the host part is called the host ID. Uh, what is the net ID and what is the host ID? In fact, uh, by definition, we speak that what is the internet? So by definition, we say uh, it is the network of networks globally distributed. Uh, so, uh, here the net ID defines the network ID. For example, if you have intranet, say for example, not the internet, intranet. So, uh, if on the intranet, there are four different networks available, then how it will be decided that to which network, which of the computers does belong. So it is uh, categorized on the basis of uh, the net ID. So these are categorized on the basis of uh, the net ID. So the net ID uh, defines the network for a host. For example, if there are four networks and there are 1000 computers. So looking to the IP address of any of the device, you can find out what is the host uh, ID and what is the net ID. So from the net ID, we can define that how much of the computers are connected to network A, how much of the computers are connected to network B, and then C, and 4, and 5, huh? D, and E, and F, or whatsoever is there. So if there are four networks, say, uh, as uh, in Abbasian University, we have uh, multiple labs, for example, uh, programming lab one, programming lab two, uh, uh, GC lab one, GC lab two. So we can separate these networks. For example, if all the computers available in GC lab one will have the same net ID, but every computer will have a different host ID. Similarly, in GC Lab 2, all the computers will have the same net ID, but will have a different host ID. So from the net ID, we can determine which of the computers are belonging to Lab 1. 
and which of the computers are belonging to lab two? Lab one and the GC lab two. So based on this, we are dividing the IP addresses into two major types. One is called the class full IP addresses, and the other one is called the classless IP addressing. So what are uh, what I discuss, it is available over here, uh, that what is a class full IP addressing and what is a classless IP addressing. So we will discuss the classless IP addressing later on during this course. But in today's topic, I am discussing the class full IP addressing. So based on the IANA, it has divided the IP addresses into five classes. What are mentioned over here? Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class E. So what is happening in class A that it reserve one octet for the net ID and five octets for, oh sorry, three octets for the host ID. So if you look to this, nomenclature or the structure. So there are four bytes in total. So one byte to the leftmost uh, is assigned to the net ID. And these three are belonging to the host ID. And if we convert it to the binary format, so in class A, the first bit is a zero. The first bit will be zero. This is the simple understanding of the class A addresses in binary format. In class B, two bytes are assigned for the net ID and two bytes are assigned for the host ID. Our two octets are given to the net ID and two octets are assigned to the host ID. Uh, for the better understanding, if we convert the IP addresses to the binary format. So they will have the one zero format. So it will have the one zero format. And in class C, we see that the three octets are assigned to the network and one octet is assigned to the host. So looking to this structure, these three uh, bytes, the first three bits,
So the three uh, bits of the class C will be one one zero if we convert it into the binary format and rest or whatsoever will be there. The class B is used for the uh, multicast addressing and class E is reserved for the future use. Normally it is used for different uh, uh, experiments in the United States, specifically for the military uh, uh, and uh, operations and very uh, secret projects where those are being done by different agencies. So they are assigning the IP addresses for the class E. But if uh, we use it on our own systems, they will not work because special settings are required for the class D and the class E IP addressings. Uh, looking to this structure, what I discussed over here is available uh, in the uh, decimal format. So in class A, you see that the net ID is assigned one octet. So they start from zero up to 127. So if an IP address is assigned with the starting with zero up to one to seven. So frankly speaking, it will be called the class A IP addressing. And in class B, we have two bytes for the host ID and two bytes for the net ID. So the IP addresses start from one to eight and ends at one nine one dot two five five. One to eight dot zero and ends at one nine one dot two five five. In class C, we have the net ID uh, from 192 and ends at 223. So starting from 192.0.0 and ends at 223.255.255. And if you look over here, that in class A,